Black leg is one of the Clostridia diseases. Um, it's, a, it's a caused by bacteria of the family of Clostridia. And it's a bacteria that lives in soil, and it's one that the, the cows uh, take into their body by eating soil along with grass. Black leg is caused by a, a bacteria known as a Clostridium, um, a group of bacteria that cause a number of diseases in sheep and cattle, tend to be sporadic in nature, um, where you can just get a one-off incident. You may have a group of cows, or typically with black legs, some young stock, you'll just get one animal affected. Um, they're omnipresent. They're actually everywhere. They're in the soil, they're in the environment. Um, they're what's known as an anaerobic bacteria, so they grow better in the absence of, of oxygen. The bacteria lives in the cow, it can become dormant within the cow in the muscles, and it starts to cause disease and, and a, a problem within the cows when there's trauma, so either a bump or a bruise or a cut to the cow. And where the bacteria is living in the muscle, there's a, a shortage of oxygen supply to that bit of the muscle, so the bacteria then starts to multiply in this, in this environment where there's a shortage of oxygen. And as the bacteria multiplies, it releases toxins which inevitably kill the cow, almost inevitably. But the bacteria so it can also survive out on, on grass for, for, for years. It can form spores which can become very resistant. What you'll often notice in young stock is you'll, you'll actually see a lame animal and that can often be the, the first manifestation. And then it's characterised by essentially you'll, you'll find a cold area on the limb and what you've got is possibly incited by a, another event, bruising, damage to a muscle that creates the right environment in which that bacteria, which is already there, can actually manage to flourish and actually go on to cause disease. So releases toxins, which actually then damage the muscle. The name black leg comes from the fact that if you go and look at the muscle later on down the line after the animal may have died, because often it can be a, a fatal disease, then actually you'll see um, the muscle have been blackened as it's been destroyed by the toxins. That said, you know, Clostridia are very sensitive to penicillin, um, but it's a case of actually getting in there early enough to catch the disease to, to be able to stop a fatality. Clostridial disease is something that I think if a farmer has had it, he's very aware of. It is everywhere, every cow is theoretically susceptible, and various different clostridial bacteria producing toxins cause sudden death in cattle and in sheep. Um, treatment is very rarely effective or successful, um, and the only real way to prevent it, and a very cost-effective way of preventing it, is by using clostridial vaccines such as Covexin A, Covexin 10. Yeah, I think that there's a potential for uh, a case of black leg on pretty much every farm. You'll find it, it's there. If you look hard enough, you'll find the bacteria, Clostridium chauvae, I think it is, you'll actually find it in the soil. Um, and it's there essentially waiting for the right set of circumstances um, which enable it to then go on and cause disease. A bit like clostridial diseases in sheep, that you can go quite possibly for, for several years and then you get the, the, the incident at the right time that means you can get out a, a, an outbreak of braxia, an outbreak of struck in sheep and bang, you've got a problems in a, a number of sheep when you've seen no problems for years earlier. What you tend to find is that farmers might have a bunch of cattle out of grass, they'll have one die and they won't tell us, they'll have two die and they'll ring us up. And that's, it's, it's, if it's close together, <clears throat> there's no obvious reasons for, for that death. And then we'll get it post-mortem, either we'll post-mortem ourselves or we'll get it post-mortem at the local nursery lab. And, uh, and that's when we'll die. It's something we'll probably see a couple of cases a year. It's certainly, I would say it's becoming more prevalent now, whether that's because we're diagnosing it more or whether it's actually becoming more prevalent, I'm not just really sure. The majority of clostridial diseases are eminently um, preventable with very cheap vaccines. Um, they're probably amongst the cheapest vaccines that are available, picked up at your vets, your agricultural merchants, and it's sort of a, a bit of an insurance. You know, you can go and as many, how many herds are, are caught out, it's so sporadic that you may go 10 years without seeing a case of black leg and then you can have two or three on the trot. Um, and actually for a vaccine that would have cost sort of 10 pence per animal per year, that sort of order, um, you've suddenly got a loss of a, an animal in a, a bill for hundreds of pounds that could have been easily of prevented. It's very rare you see an animal alive with black leg. I've only ever seen one once and it was dead a few hours later. But if you diagnose an animal dead with it, then you, the rest of its cohorts with animals on the same piece of field um, can be vaccinated and also use long-acting penicillin to try and kill any bacteria which may be already be in the animal. And what is very frustrating about it is that clostridium vaccination is very cheap and very easy. Um, so if you just imagine the cost of losing one beast every two or three years, would probably pay for the vaccination on your farm for two generations. So clostridial disease is a strange one in that they look fine today, and very often the very best one in the field is lying on the ground with his legs sticking up in the air the following day. And we can prevent it simply 